Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 7 verse 9, Philippians chapter 4 verse 12, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, our Father, for showing us how to live by faith, showing us your preferred system, showing us how you operate. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter 7, verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. All right, and so this is talking about the centurion who was faithful to the Hebrews. He was a good good person according to them. Um, and he, you know, had a servant who was sick. And Christ was impressed by the centurion because the centurion had faith, right? He, he had, first of all, s- sent for Jesus um, to heal the servant. That was a step of faith. But then he sent more people to stop Christ and tell him, tell him that he, it was unnecessary for him to come under his household um, and that he wasn't worthy to um, have him in his home. But um, it, he believed um, in Christ and he believed what he could do. So therefore, um, if he just spoke, he believed that the servant can be healed. And so um, the thing that Christ was saying was, this is when he heard these things, he marveled at him. Mind you, he had sent his friends, right? But Christ was marveling at the centurion. Why was he marveling at him? Well, because first of all, this was a man of faith because he wasn't even a Jewish man. Right. And yet he knew that the God of the Hebrews was God. Right. So therefore he paid homage to the God of the Hebrews by helping to build them a temple. And so that was a faith move. Right. And then also the fact that he believed his servants when they said, you know, talk about Jesus and and the fact that, you know, he'll probably heal this servant. Um, And then also he sent friends to tell Jesus the message, right? So therefore he believed even through them, not through him coming personally, that that the servant could be could be saved, right? And Christ loved that, right? It says he marveled at him and turned to the crowd that followed him and said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Why? Because this man understood faith-based systems he explained to christ through through friends i mean that in itself is a faith move he didn't even say it to him himself he explained it through friends that he sent um that he was a man of authority and that, you know, he had people under him. And if he tells them to go, they go. If he tells them to come, they come, right? So this man understood faith-based systems. Why is being a soldier a faith-based system? Well, it's just because there's nothing making the people work for um the man. You have to believe in the authority of that man, right? If you believe in the authority of that man, you realize that power is behind that man, regardless of what you actually physically see, right? The, the physical appearance is not what dictates the authority of the man. It is the position and the power that's behind the man. And so this man understood that. This man understood that Christ had power and authority. He understood that Christ was a man of a faith-based system. And he knew that if he just asked and Christ approved and spoke of the thing, it was like a verbal order that it had to be done. Amen. And so we have to come to Christ 
by faith, right? It is by grace through faith that we receive our salvation. And, and Christ loves it when we come to him in faith. He loves it when we come to him believing that we are going to receive what it is that we're asking for, right? Believing in his ability. And so um, Christ marveled at him. It says, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. So he is looking at this man's faith and he is he is impressed, right? And, and this man, you know, was able to receive that healing for his servant. Why? Because he believed, he believed it was simple as that he believed. And so that's what God wants us to do in this hour. He wants us to believe in him and what he can do for us. All right, so the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Philippians chapter four, verse 12. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty, hunger and hunger, abundance and need, right? And so this doesn't mean that we're not going to be brought low, right? This means that we know how to face being brought low. We know that all things work together through Christ who gives us strength, right? I mean, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You have to know that when you're brought low, he is going to be the one that lifts you up. He's going to be there with you. He's going to make a way for you. He's going to grant you favor even in your lowness, right? It says, and I know how to abound, um, we can be up on top. It, we don't have to always be on the bottom, but God is going to show us how to be on top and not let the top have us, right? And it says, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. So God is showing us how to receive, right? How to, to walk in different ways and still do it through him successfully, right? And by success, I mean with God's approval. And so um, verse 13 of Philippians 4 actually says how explains how you do this, right? It is, um, I, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength right? And so it is through Christ that we are brought low. It is through Christ that we abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty. That's through Christ. Hunger through Christ. Abundance through Christ and need through Christ. He shows us how to live, right? And he shows us how um, to be people of faith. When Christ you know, it is the center of your life and you can do all things through him. That is a faith-based system, right? Why is it a faith-based system? Because Christ, um, you can't see him, right? So you can't see him, but you know that he's going to be there for you as you're brought low. He's going to be there for you as you abound. He's going to be there for you in any and every circumstance, right? He's going to be there for you in, in facing plenty, hungry, abundance, and need, right? So you you have to be people of faith, right? When you go through these circumstances and, and God rewards that, God blesses that so abundantly. One example I have of that is that um, it was about two years ago, I had gotten sick, right? I had, I was like, like so sick and I'm a person of faith. I don't believe in talking about being sick. <laughs> so you're not going to hear me admit that I'm sick. I will be brought low, but I will not be speaking sickness. I will be speaking that I am well and that I'm fine. <laughs> and so at this time, you know, I live right now in another state. And during that time, I, I live where I live now. And so um, I live in another state than my family. And so most of my family. And so I was, when I tell y'all I was so sick and I had two girls 
two small girls at the time and um I still have two small girls but um and my husband you know doing his best to do everything and so I was so bad you guys and um Christ was with me why he had already made provision for me to be sick right I I actually didn't even like realized that I was sick and then like my mom came from out of town and I like sneezed in the car I remember sneezing a couple times and I was like I don't know what's wrong with my sinuses I remember saying this to my mom as I'm picking her up from the airport and I was you guys I got so sick within like a day or two and you weren't going to hear it coming from my mouth my mom was looking like girl what is wrong with you and my mom was here and she helped me with everything. She took care of me. She she gave me soup. She made her, she makes this, you know, orange and garlic and all this stuff soup. This thing tastes so good. And I remember like being so grateful because I was like so sick that I couldn't like really move around in bed. Right? <laughs> like I couldn't, I was in so much pain and it was like the flu. I, I must have had the flu or something like that. And so um, I'm a person of faith. So I'm so grateful to Christ because just like this scripture talks about, it's not that you won't be brought low. It's that Christ is going to be with you and you can do all things. You can face all things. You can get through all things, right? It is a faith-based system. He's got a provision made for you when you're sick. He's got provision made for you when you're going through. It may not be what you want, you may just want a whole bunch of money to solve this problem or that problem, but he's going to be there for you. And this is a faith-based system. You have to know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The fact that my mom was right there at that exact time coming into town when I was so sick to the point where my husband wouldn't have been able to work because he would have had to come home and take care of the girls. And it was just such a, a perfect um, come together in time. And I just feel like the coordination of the timing was just so great. And so I just knew that that was the Lord that, that had done this. He knew what I was about to go through and he had already made provision for it to happen, right? Not to stop it, but to allow it to happen and for me to be blessed even in it. Amen. So let Christ bless you. Even in your suffering, you have to have faith in his ability. Just like the centurion did. He had faith in Christ's ability to do a thing, right? He believed in the power that was behind the man. He believed in this man's ability. And so we need to do the same thing, right? We need to do the same thing. We need to be people of faith. We need to be speaking by faith, regardless of what we're facing, right? because God has made provision for us. Amen. All right. And so the last scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter seven, verse nine. One might even say that Levi himself who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. And I was like, Lord, how is this, you know, a part of the conflation? Of course, what did he say? The Holy Spirit said, it's because it's by faith. Of course, it says one might even say that Levi himself. So remember the Levites um, were the ones who were the priests, right? And so they received the tithes. It says Levi himself who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. How could Levi, who had come so long after Abraham, have paid tithes through Abraham? Well, if you read the rest of Hebrews 7, it talks about that this is by faith, right? When Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, it was a faith-based system, right? Just like with Christ, Christ believing on Christ is a faith-based system. Um, Melchizedek is not like a priest that would later come. Melchizedek was in an order of his own, just like Christ was, right? And so for Abraham to pay tithes to Melchizedek, it had to be tithing to him by faith 
right? That he was a priest of God, that he was a priest forever. And so um, he was not a priest by manly descendant. They hadn't even come yet. So um, the, he's saying that Levi had paid tithes through Abraham. Why? Because Levi was in the loins of Abraham. So therefore, even as the, the greater blesses the lesser, um, that is how Levi is able to pay tithes to Melchizedek through the loins of Abraham. So Melchizedek would be the greater, the, the lesser pays tithes to the greater, right? So the you would pay tithes to the priest, right? And so um the lesser would be Abraham and he paid tithe to Melchizedek. And so in the same way, that's a faith-based system. And so in the same way, he's saying, okay, and, and basically it's like Levi himself had paid tithes to Melchizedek the greater, right? And how is that possible? Through the loins of Abraham. That is a faith that we would have to just say, yes, okay, I get it, right? Because if he's inside of him, while he's paying tithes, then him and his descendants are paying tithes. And so these are faith-based systems. These are systems that we don't necessarily see or understand with our own physical eyes, but this is through the eyes of faith. This is through the realm of the unseen. And so therefore we have to understand it by faith. It is not um, a system that is just with your own eyes. And when we do that, Christ marvels. He's happy. He's pleased. He blesses, right? Because we are people of faith and that's how we should live. We should understand the things that we understand by faith. We should walk by faith. We should receive what we receive by faith. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for this completion. Lord Jesus, we ask you to help us to receive what you would have us to receive by faith. Help us to just trust in you. If you said it, it is so, Lord God. We can do all things through you who gives us strength. And that is the faith, um, the measure of faith that you have given us. Help us to walk in that. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. No one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Um, also, if you're having any problems with understanding or hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, just sit down, chew on your word, read your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face today while he may be found. Amen. Um, also, one of the best ways to, um, oh, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do was to forsake not the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Make sure you go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Um, all right, you guys also go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.